Hello, everybody. Um, we are going to start the webinar in just a few moments from now. Thank you. All right. Um, hello, everybody. This is uh, Daniel speaking. And today uh, we are going to open the part two of uh, the this uh, webinar uh, series. And uh, this is about uh, the post processor. We are going to continue to demonstrate you the new features available in 2021, bringing your knowledge about uh, the post processors and um, using the, the features in 2021 to the maximum level. Uh, today with me is uh, Vladimir Notashevich, who will be the main presenter. But uh, before we continue, I just want to uh, tell you a few words about our forum. I'm really proud of uh, that we make a subject on the forum, as I see many of you activate yourself also. So I'm also, again, inviting you to continue uh, uh, writing as the subjects. Okay, we are going to cover them. Um, and uh, yes, about uh, somebody asked me, you know, a few things about the, the um, uh, where are the recordings? Recordings you may find also on the website, uh, but you can also find it in the in the forum. There's a couple of places where you can do that. For example, in this subject over here, I have uh, put a link into this subject over here. So if you move your mouse, you know, and if, if you hover it over here, you can see that it's. Um, um, a hyperlink where you can click it and it will bring you to the webinar itself okay uh, what is interesting about it is that uh, over here we also put here the, uh, the time lap here and you can just easily jump to a particular subject or you can just move it over here so you can see on which particular subject we specifically talk in the timeline here uh, also we got the very frequent uh, uh, questions like Daniel what is the tool that you have used uh, for the for changing the version and um, and uh, jumping from project to project and um, I will in the in the I will leave you in the chat okay so everybody who is watching that uh, watching us live we are going to put it in the chat area the two links uh, about uh, uh, the feature that I have uh, sorry the application that I have used and also uh, the next uh, uh, application that uh, many of you asked me for, like what is the tool that I use, you know, to uh, make some drawing on the screen lively. Okay, so this is I'm going to leave so two links over there. Also in the any of description here, I'm going to leave the same link so you can also easily uh, find them uh, find them uh, there as well. Um, yeah. That's that's what I wanted to say. Now I will leave my I will I will make the presenter Mada Natashevic. Uh, let me just uh, find it over here. Mm -hmm. Okay, well then the stage is yours. So here we go. I will make you presenter. Thank you, Daniel, for uh, introducing. Uh, I hope uh, everybody can see my screen now. Yes. OK. Now you can see that. Thank you. Uh, today, uh, I will talk about uh, subjects related to the second webinar. You can see on the Solid Game Forum. Uh, I would like to start my webinar today with uh, 
a very uh, with uh, a very nice subject that I want to show you. Uh, it's toolkit settings uh, inside VMAD. Okay, I hope everybody know uh, <clears throat> how it was in previous SolidCam versions uh, in uh, SolidCam 2020 and uh, versions before. Okay, I will show you the picture. So uh, we had these two parameters inside main working style. Okay, but right now in SolidCam uh, 2021, in VMAD working style tab, we implement a, a toolkit parameter page. Okay, and you can see here are located all parameters regarding toolkit. Okay, the first parameter is toolkit advanced view mode. It by default it will be no. Okay, let me show you what is it actually. If I open toolkit, you will see <clears throat> uh, this is basic view actually toolkit. You can turn turn on um, advanced view. Uh, you can do that by F9 too function. Uh, so if I change this view, you can see that now uh, all structure is here and here we can see our tools. The advantage uh, of uh, this view is uh, that you uh, we can create a tool structure uh, from the top to the bottom. What it means? That means that I can first add some folder, okay, and I can add tool to this folder. We cannot do that in basic view, okay? Let me show you that. I will swap views. For the basic view, uh, we first need to add tool, okay? And when we add to, let me just do it. And this one too. I will do it again. Double click on tool. You can see that here. And then we can add some folder. Okay. I would like to show you another feature toolkit you go to the view menu in settings when you open these settings we can <clears throat> we can turn on this this option which will uh, automatically add adapter and folder when we select tool okay now, if I select some tool, let's be just this one. For double click, we just, yes, I have to be in basic view. I'm sorry. We double click. You will see we will automatically add uh, adapter and holder this tool. Okay, um, uh, this adapter uh, is actually adapter uh, which we are using in the in the VMID. Let me show you. That. Okay. Okay. Now I click here stations you'll see this is adapter type okay it can be ascal 40 it can be bt 40 50 doesn't matter okay uh, let's go to the next option 
inside Zoom ID. Okay. Next option is next parameter actually, uh, is machine tool setup library name. This is parameter we already know from uh, the SolidCam 2020 and earlier versions. It's just different name and it is connected to uh, TLM database. Actually, it's it's a tool library machine. Okay, if you select some TLM, when you're creating a new part, you will automatically load every tool in toolkit. Okay. The second one is tool assembly library. Is not. If I select some library, okay, let me say this one, machine tool setup library will be automatically not. So that's mean that means uh, we cannot in the same time use both options. Okay. Sometimes uh, uh, is somebody like to use this option, but some companies um, which some companies um, actually uh, wants to sort it by tool adapters, uh, ESCA 40, BT 40, doesn't matter. And for them, and this is probably better solution. So you can choose what you will use, okay? Let's go for the next, uh, revolve folders for milling. Basically, I will not talk uh, about this option today. This option um, will be uh, more deeply explained uh, in the sum of next webinars. So, and this option is Delta for H. This is old option. And you probably know uh, what this option doing. Uh, I mean, if you select some uh, tool H offset, you can put some delta here. For example, if I number 20 here and select delta and select the H offset to be, I don't know, 10 for tool 10, uh, automatically the offset will be 30. So that's it. The next subject I want to cover is how user how to how user tool offset variable works in SolidTM 2021. You probably remember in uh, previous versions. Let me show you that. In SolidCam 2020. The, if this option is selected, okay, the if not selected, sorry, the output will be zero for this variable. But if this option is selected, like you see, see here, this variable will be one. Okay, let me show you what is new in SolidCam 2021. If I go to operation tool, data, you can see this option is not selected, okay? But if I go to toolkit, and for the same tool, I think, yes, it's tool 11, this, I can change offset number. I can do that in two different ways, okay? If I select tool, and go to quick access, you will see that tool number is 11. I can, I can select this option and I can put any number here. For instance, number 17, okay? The second way how you can do it, if you click on the cutting, automatically you will go to the off page and you will see that Okay, 
and save this. If I generate trace five, If I go to change tool, let me just find this variable. So it's actually let me find it. Let me type it. So you remember in um, operation, these um, options were was not selected. But if we have a different tool offset number and from the tool number, this will be output will be one. Okay. I will close this. Okay, the next topic, I will talk about that. Uh, it will be about um, HU pose. This variable is restored in drill point procedure. You probably know um, this variable is mostly used for the machines based on the CL data output. And I will show you what uh, what is exactly this variable? What uh, what position we can get with this variable? Okay, here we have very very simple part, and uh, for this, oh, I created one point on the top of the drill hole. Okay, and if I want to measure it, the position. Of this hole according to Mac 1, you can see it here, we will get some coordinates. Okay, we back to the system. If I generate trace, okay, okay and go to the drill procedure. We actually need the drill point. You will see these coordinates are exactly the same as we can see here. So what these coordinates that will can show to, to us. Um, this is the actually the upper level of drilling position of upper level dream. Okay, I hope everybody understand that. The next uh, the next subject um, I will talk uh, is how to using variable to origin position. Let me just prepare another machine. Open machine for this. Very nice. Okay. First, uh, let me show you where you can find this information and what they represent. Uh, tool origin position. Okay, if I open toolkit, 
and select some. Okay, these two be fine. If I go to right click on any of these tabs here, let's see, you will see what information we also have. X, Y, and Z. X, Y, and Z, this is actually a tool origin position. Okay. If I move this on the right side, you can see the blue one the line, it's X position, Y position, and Z position, according to, to station. Okay. Let me show you. Uh, yes, of course, you can do that in advanced view too. We have this my slider, and you can see that information here. Okay. Why this? Uh, why we need this information? As you probably know. Uh, we can export this information to any machine, but especially on the machine with uh, Siemens controller. With Siemens controller, it has capability to import this with additional file, or and they uh, can easily uh, use this information. Let me show you how that looks. Uh, I have. Here, two nice examples of this. Okay, basically, this is what represents to origin position, as you can see here. On the left side, you can see it's really cool, and this is actually coordinate from tooltip to the station. On the right side, you can see turning tool. Okay. Uh, here I have uh, one example. Uh, this is from our colleagues in Germany. Uh, you can see this is a separate file, uh, one underscore three uh, dot mpf. Uh, in this file, this file uh, actually contains all information uh, related to this tool. This is tool number, and we have here. U and L, this is position of tooltip. Okay, uh, let me show you something else. I have a very nice example um, here. Let me just find it for you. Okay, we'll open that. Okay. You can see uh, this is uh, from Tornos machine. We can export all this uh, information related to tool position, tool number, and so on. Um, on the machine, we have uh, we can choose: Are we going to use this information, or we use inform from G code, right? Or we can, or we will use uh, machine tool setup actually. Okay, next I want to see if I miss something. Okay, uh, now uh, in earlier versions of Solid Cam, we uh, we didn't be we didn't be able to uh, export this information. Now we can export this information and we can use it as well on the machine. Okay, the next subject. I want to cover. Um, actually, I want to show you new variable uh, station name in turret. Let me show you that uh, what this variable represent. If I open VMID, you will see here on upper turret we have station station one. Okay, on the lower turret we have all these stations. This is a uh, advice for uh, all colleagues. Uh, 
uh, who develop, developing the post processor. Um, I don't like this uh, this name. Um, I I think it's more user friendly uh, when you have uh, exact name of the station. You can put any name you like here. I don't know. It can be upper turret with B axis or something like that. It's much more friendly than this one. Okay. Um, close this. Uh, I will generate a trace. Again. Okay. And let me show you where you can find this uh, variable is inside of change tool. Okay, so I will jump to change tool. Feature. It should be, let me see. Exactly here. Yes. So um, now we can be uh, in previous versions uh, without this variable, we use it actually uh, tool position in turret. Now we have possibility to use this variable to, to define something. Um, Related to tool data or set, whatever. Okay, this variable is not new variable, station angle in target, but uh, we never talk about this variable. I will show you what this uh, variable represents. Okay, if I if I go to this operation I will click on machine view okay then let me show you okay it's station nine and uh, tracks one here in this field you can see it is 120 if I go back to my trace you will see this is the same value. It can be useful in some situation. All right. Uh, the next subject I will cover it will be part tool tag, uh, next tool tag on target, and next part tool tag on target. Uh, you probably know uh, that uh, we have see just no okay um, you probably know uh, that we had a tool tag variable it is uh, originally developed uh, for the get function okay like uh, get tool vector direction in station uh, we are using for 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 that, but uh, we notice that uh, guys who develop post, post post processor they recognize um, this variable is very very useful because it is uh, actually unique number for each tool. You can have I don't know two tools with the same tool number, but uh, they tool tag number will be completely different. Um, what is uh, what is problem with this variable? Uh, this is actually uh, this var variable um, is actually randomly generated and that's actually the problem if you want to use this variable in arrays uh, you want to store some 
tool data and use it later in post-processor uh, because our array um, cannot accept number bigger than I think 16,000 okay and a uh, tool tag number for the tool one can be 22 tool tag for second tool can be I don't know 20,000 or 25,000 or something like that it's because it's uh, uh, randomly generated okay we cannot control that so uh, for that reason we developed a new variables let me again generate trace to show you that variables channel this one um, arc tag. okay here it is it is part tool tag um, what is interesting about this variable this variable always start at number one for instance if we, if we have a 15 tools in our toolkit okay this number will be from 1 to 50. The biggest number will be 50. Let's imagine if we delete tool number 3 and 6, for instance. This number will be 30. Why? Because we have 13 tools. Okay. I hope this is... You understand that? Okay. And... Uh, uh, this variable um, okay next tool tag on turret next tool tag on turret let me find it uh, okay I don't have it in dev tool I go change tool yes it's here and here it is. Okay. Next tool tag on turret. We can see this value and next part tool tag on turret, which working exactly the same as the part tool tag. It will start from number one. Okay. Um, the next subject is probably the hardest uh, subject in this webinar. It's handling. Uh, Four axis phase with tilt plane parameter. I will show you this parameter is inside BMID. If you go to controller definition tab, okay, you will see uh, this sub menu uh, related to tilt to plane definition. Here you can see this parameter. This parameter. By default will be no so in the previous version we didn't have this parameter but uh, it works like this parameter is no so you don't have, have to afraid to um, even if you update to solid cam 2021 your post processor will work will work uh, fine okay so but you have to be careful if uh, switch this to yes. I will uh, first. I will show you uh, how it working uh, with this parameter no. Okay. Uh, I forgot to mention uh, this parameter mostly is useful uh, on the Milton machine with only with B axis. Like Mazak Integrex, uh, DMG Antiques, um, it cannot be used uh, on the machines with two rotary turret, for example. Okay, and uh, it can be used only for uh, for operation 
to enhance the operation where we are using for axis phase. So let me show you that. Okay, I will go to motion control. You see this option is selected and phase. So it doesn't have uh, effect uh, on the radial machine, only for phase. Okay, and now if I Open machine preview. Okay. Let me show you that. You will see what is orientation of MAC2. This parameter is useful for the machine uh, where we have MAC1 and MAC2 in the same. Uh, in this uh, where uh, z axis in the same direction okay with uh, the i hope you understand that uh, okay i will show you right now we can see here mac2 okay i will turn it off and i will turn on uh, a local local uh, coordinate system actually position but you can see here that set orientation is not will not uh, go into part it's go out from the part right and i will close this operation to show you how it looks when we okay something strange is going on yes all right i will turn on toolpad and I will show you something very nice. ID, go to control and definition again, field plane definition, and I will set this parameter to yes. Okay, I will save these settings. Now, if I go to the same operation, Okay, I will open machine preview again. It's the same like in previous with Mac 2 orientation. Okay, but if I turn on local coordinate system, you will notice it is changing. Okay, because now we are have we having plane here. If I close this and I think something like this. Uh, I'll take a screenshot of this one and I want to add something. This is our y axis in this case. Okay, let me create another one. Actually, this is how our local coordinate system looks now. Okay, I will just okay. and now I will generate the trace again. Okay. Fine. Um, I need procedure it plane. Okay, now you can see our first plane angle is rotated by 180 degrees uh, around y axis. With this parameter, no, I forgot to show you that, but believe me, this first plane angle is zero. Okay, now. I want to go to the move procedure. Okay. We will see here something very nice. Yeah, I will close this related to the second channel. And I will this again and again. 
this one. Okay, good. According to this coordinate system, we I'm expecting the the starting point will be in negative y and negative x direction. Okay, so we can see here x l pose negative x negative y z l pose is positive. If we compare that with h pose, you will see completely uh, the same coordinates but opposite. Okay, here we have positive x coordinate, uh, negative y. This is not changed, uh, and negative z. Okay, this is um, very useful uh, for the when we want to include the four taxes, um, especially with cycle like um, G twelve point one on Fanuc. Okay, uh, in this case, if we set this parameter to yes and we want to rotate plane, we will use this coordinate set. In previous versions, we used H pose. Now we can use to L pose. In move, line, arc, move, actually five axes, line five axes, arc five axes, and so on. Okay. Picture. We don't need that anymore. Uh, okay, uh, the next subject. Um, the next subject uh, is effective management of drive units out. Okay, uh, we have no. Next subject will be using get last job number in general. Let me open SolidCam help. Okay, GPP tool. Nice. Uh, here, commands, get functions. Okay, let me just find it. This is the one. Uh, why we need this? This is the question. If on some machine, if some action has to be done, uh, after last job in channel or before last uh, job in channel or inside of job with this get function we will automatically get information what is our last job in channel okay i will just copy this one and let me help Okay, I will go to post processor, GPP, open it. Okay, I already played with some something here. Okay. No, I cannot do that that way. Just duplicate this one. Go here and this procedure I will call inside start the job okay i will save that let me see what is output this one now we don't need trace okay now you can see on the first start of job, we already have this information. First, second channel two. And we can use that in post. Okay, the next subject will be effective management of drive units output. I will talk now, uh, this is get functions two. And this is this one uh, is drive unit share. Okay, we can get information: is this drive unit shared or not? Like in previous case, 
I will just, you just can copy this from, so it can help. Okay, then go to GDP. I will, I will leave that, why not? It's inside of startup job, just make this, okay, now it's nice. I will just save that. And I will again generate G code to see what is output in this case. Okay, this is second, this is first gen. And you can see here, drive unit is not shared for this job or drive unit is shared. Uh, where is shared? This is, uh, this is balanced rough operation, okay? This first operation, you can see here, it's phase operation. So drive unit is not shared, but in the second one, you will see drive unit is shared. Let me just open quickly the channel synchronization to show you that. Okay, here you can see this sign. This means that drive unit is shared. This time it's shared in balance rough, but you can create two separate uh, turning operation on one on the, let's we say, first channel and second one on uh, second channel. And you can, uh, you can put it in the same label. Of course, the spin has to be the same in both operation. In that case, you will again see sign like this, okay? Uh, for the previous subject, I forgot to mention uh, that, let me see, do we have it? Yes, why not? We can use that to uh, last job in channel. What What is last job in channel? Let me show you. The result uh, for the first channel was 63. It's actually this number here, okay? And for the second channel was 44. It's actually this number here. So MCO are include in, included in this case, okay? Um, we have another topic, but my colleague Daniel talk about that and I will uh, make him a presenter. Right now, I hope you enjoyed in this webinar and see you in the next one. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, thank you, Mladen. Thank you very much for this wonderful presentation. I will just use this opportunity to, I just hopefully can see my screen, right? Yeah, beautiful. Okay, so um, I would just use this opportunity to show you guys one uh, recently uh, updated feature that uh, it's uh, well also documented in uh, SOCAN 2021, at the latest uh, help file. It is about um, um, uh, the using its last uh, job uh, using drive unit. Now, what <coughs> the, the name? It's a little bit, you know. Um, not safe explanatory. Uh, let me just uh, show you which one it is. Um, so it is last job by uh, using drive unit. Usually, uh, you know, for all the posts that I've seen so far in the support uh, and the, the the way how I was defining, you know, the the post for uh, turning off the li live tools, for instance, or turning off the spindles. Okay, you all, we all know how important that is, but you don't also want to turn off the the, the 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 spindle, or you don't want to turn off the live tools, or you really want to control this well. And uh, this was always like uh, making very you know strict uh, structure of your post in order you know to read what is in the next job, you know reordering you know some of the procedures so you 
uh, you are saving the data that is in the current job, then you're checking what is in the next, and then you're making sure you turn off the spin. And you know, so this is this, this is like a nightmare, you know. And I, I was really looking for some function that uh, Solkia will provide me, so I can use that one as the uh, very advanced feature to manage the uh, turning on and off. You know, sorry, let's say long to turn off the drive units in uh, in the in the output. Uh, the, the, lo the logical place where you, you should put this function, it's in the end of job, okay? Uh, well, you can put it uh, anywhere in your post, but in this demonstration, I will use, you know, the end of job as the logical place where I will put that. And I'll start, you know, with the uh, simple code um, uh, that you can also find it kind of um, in, the, uh, in the help file, but uh, here I'm going to use it a little bit different uh, so we can both analyze together you know uh, the uh, the output. Okay, so I can also understand you. I, I can also tell you uh, the the way how so I can uh, outputs uh, the, the the information from this function. So I, I just named the user uh, defined and the local uh, variable uh, that I, I can only use it in this end of job. Okay. And as you can see, it's logical. So the output can be also logical, but you can also put it as integer because the output can be only true or false or zero or one. Okay, so even putting this logical to integer, the function will work completely fine. And I'm going to paste this. And the uh, the function is basically, you know, the is last uh, job um, using a drive unit. And the parameters that you need to fill in into the brackets, we have basically four four of them okay now i think you will see you know the name it's pretty weird and pretty long let's say but even you know it's not easy to find you know the the the, the name for such a complex function uh, that i'm going to tell you that's why one of the reasons why we are you know, guys we are making this webinars so uh, the first always is you know the sync uh data name okay as the um at this parameter as i also talked in the in the previous webinar so i'll not repeat it over here the next it's the channel id so we need to know in which channel you actually want to output this code uh, we are going also to use the sync label okay and the last is actually the index job so the, the i think the most important is the index job okay and uh, what you should know about the get functions okay guys maybe we didn't i didn't say i mentioned this in the previous webinar but the, the get functions are so nice because they are not strict structure depending okay okay you can uh, you know, get these kind of informations even, you know, in the start program procedure on the very beginning of the G code for any job that is located in your channel synchronization without going into any start of a job or end of job, okay? As long as you have filled this information, you know, the function will return you the value. Now, to better analyze, you know, this output, okay? Uh, I will just create something silly so we can easily find it uh, in, the, in the output. So something like this. And I'll just close it uh, like this. And then I'll just make sure, you know, to output uh, like a new block. Then we are going to output the channel ID, which is the channel channel ID over here. And then I want also to get this sync label and the index job. All right. And uh, for this, I'm just going to duplicate it and move it down. And this is this one. I don't need it. Right. I think I didn't miss anything here. Now you probably wonder why I make it this because it's something that I don't have any, and I don't want to have the two for the searching here. And what what it is? I'm using the same project as as Baden did. And important uh, before I generate the G code, I want both. All of us, you know, to analyze a little bit this channel synchronization. Uh, it, it a little bit looks, you know, um, complicated. But uh, once I explain you how you can use this function, it will be very clear to you. So the first thing is what we are checking in the. Oops, sorry. <laughs> so what we are using, you know, in this. Uh, let me make. Tool. Okay, that's better. So first, what we are checking, you know, in this uh, in this function is whether or not, you know, the two stations uh, between the job is different. So the first thing what we're checking is the station ID. Okay, so what that means. So it means that if I have this job over here, 
and the next job index job is the different different station than the previous job we are going to give you and return the value of one okay which means it's true so we are making sure that whenever we have a tool change we uh, output you this as one okay now it's not um, um, it's not the same for the uh, revolvers and also for the spindle for the spindle you, you will usually as mud and shown you know we have the station one so even if we have a tool change we are not going to turn off the spindle okay so you need to work a little bit with if conditions of what type of your tire it is okay but that's something you know easy to manage in comparing what we did before but what is important to understand that the, we are checking if the stations are, are different between two jobs. And the second thing, what we are checking, you know, if the drive unit that is used in that station's ID are different. Okay, so it means that even if I have the same station, but they're using, you know, kind of different uh, a drive unit for some reasons, you know, will also generate number one, okay. And the third, condition where we uh, generate uh, the number one if the next like uh, next row over here we have the label so uh, over here we have the mco and yes by the way the mcos are completely ignored by this function this is also important to know but for instance this job and this job no matter what it is they, they, the next position here the next row here is the label so there's nothing afterwards and we cannot know what is the what is after this label therefore we will always turn off uh, the uh, the, the uh, revolver for the next label okay so also even though that i have here you know the upper turret and the next job it's also the upper turret the same station and so i have the label between therefore the output will will you know uh, bring it to one all right so now we can generate the g code if you write the code correctly everything is okay so let's let's go together i'll just i know that i have quite a few error messages here that's quite okay in this case right let me just move it here okay so i, I would like to start with you know with a setup one here and maybe i will just go with a new instance so we can you know see it better just in one window and i will just move this to the right like this and now you probably wonder why i did here okay so so we have the channel i channel one and we have the sync four and we have the index job three you can see the job number it's three here you probably ask you know why we ignore this probe it is ignored because i don't have the probe in this post okay i just put it there here for the testing and and this uh, a job that we have the label after and therefore we will stop drive unit okay so let's go let's go next <clears throat> next job is the index job five so we have here the uh, uh turning job it's the thread that we are going to do with upper turret on the main spindle and uh the next is also turning therefore the value will be zero which means okay don't change you know don't turn off the the rotation the next job is 36 uh, sorry the 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 inter job six but you can note that the next job it's actually uh the uh the milling where we are going to change the drive unit okay guys so remember when when we are uh, in the turning okay we are using the drive unit from the table and if you are using you know the milling a job then the drive unit will be taken from the turret itself okay so let me go to the next one and you can see here that we have um index job six okay and we also have here the index job seven actually i have uh, it here twice i, I think i could uh remove that i think i put it into my starter job yeah let me let me just go to the starter job as i, I as i was playing with but it, there is no logic to put it there yeah exactly let me you know just to redo it it will be easier to analyze it later right 
Okay, let me go back to my uh, job index seven. Okay. This time it will be more quicker. So I'm in index job uh, seven. What is it here? Yeah, there is one thing that I forgot. I forgot here to print it out. So I'm going to do that as well. And we left the con concentration. Let me do it again. Okay, so sorry guys for this. Nobody told me anything. So it means no, no, no one follows me, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, a few more moments and uh, we end it for today. Right. Okay. There you go. Okay. We we are here now in let me go back. I want to go one back. So in the seven. Okay. We have here seven. Okay. As you can see here, the next job here is the MCO. It is completely ignored, guys. Okay. So you need to know this. It is completely ignored. And the next one is basically the label. Therefore, we will always receive this one. So what this means for you as a developer, it means that whenever it's true, you can output, you know, to stop M5 or any related M code for your turret or for your spindle. Okay, depends of uh, what, what the job type it is. Okay, so let's go for further. We have the index job 10, of course, it's immediately uh, one because here we have the label. Then we have, for, for instance, here 14, uh, one I skipped. We have 13 here, okay, the SIG label 10, we are here, and of course, next job, it's the 14, it's the, it's the same drive unit, therefore, the output will be zero, and so on and so on. I think that you probably uh, got the idea what it's all about, but now, let me just uh, open this, and this time, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you, let me close this one, and I'm going to so show you the setup too. This is more interesting than the upper turret and the upper turret it's pretty much straightforward okay guys but here we have like every job it's almost in a separate label okay and therefore you could probably ask okay this is not so important and not so you know um uh interesting because every time this value will be one okay except of course in the index job three uh sorry i have the index job three here Ah, okay. So it's now number nine. So we have here one. We have number eleven here. Also, this one it's ignored. We have thirty-three. You can see all these MCOs has been ignored, and we're coming this to number thirty-three. And now you may ask, okay, why this is one, even though that we have like three same operations. So remember, the first condition is to check the station. Uh, from my practice, I figured it out that many machine manufacturers they have the the macro behind the scenes whenever you're changing the tool you know position either though it is the linear or a revolver they will automatically turn you know stop the the, the live live tools okay uh but uh, i know that many manufacturers don't do that okay so uh, uh, i think it's better always to stop before you make a, a tool change on on the revolvers and i know many swiss type machines they're recommending whenever you know you're changing the linear a station position that you stop you know the live tools you know otherwise you will uh, destroy the gears so it is extremely good that this is implemented guys so from this job 33 i will go to the next one here we have transform 34 it's also one 35 it's also one and so on and so on now you can use this you know for outputting your stop spins on your live tool also on your um spindles as well all right. Thank you guys for, I uh, I hope you enjoyed this webinar. I'm glad and thank you again. Okay. Thank you all for joining. I will just uh, remind you to go to forum and please write us the subjects there as we are going to cover it on the uh, future webinars. Okay. So have a pleasant rest of the week and uh, see you in the seven days. Thanks a lot.